Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me. Stitching with Sue here. I'm here to do another machine embroidery video for you. I hope all is well. If you're brand new here, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy your time here and you decide to subscribe to my channel. And if you do like it, be sure to give me a thumbs up and also sharing. Sharing is caring. So you find something you like, you always want to share with everyone, right? So anyhow, um, we're here to do a, a machine embroidery project. This is fairly easy, so um, I try not to do anything too hard. Number one, because I have problems with things too hard. So I found this really beautiful mug rug on Creative Fabrica. And if you're saying well, mug rug, what is that? It's a rug for your mug, AKA coaster. And it's so pretty. And I, when I saw this, I thought, you know what, this is speaking to me. You can do it. You know, I'm going through a rough patch uh, these past few months, and I thought, I need this coaster in my life, mug rug, AKA. And um, it's done with the uh, envelope fold in the back, and I'm gonna stitch along with you. It's 20 minute stitch out, 13,011 stitches total. And if you're brand new to machine embroidery, I will put a link down below. I do have an affiliate link with Creative Fabrica. And also if you decide to purchase this design or you decide to join Creative Fabrica, be sure to use my link. I make a couple pennies on that. Every little bit adds up and helps not only uh, promote my channel more, but also to help me pay some of my bills, <laughs> which, you know, it could get costly um, when you're on a very limited budget. So um, I am on a limited budget. I enjoy doing these and I wanted to do this one with you. So go ahead and download the, the design. This video will be here for you to come back and watch or watch along now. And if you decide, hey, I wanna make that, I know some people that really could use those encouraging words, then go ahead and check it out. So it says it's five by seven, but I'll tell you, it wouldn't work in the five by seven hoop. So this hoop is a six by 10. I think it's a six by 10 hoop. It's not my largest hoop um, as I have one eight by 12. So uh, let's go ahead and get this started. It's all done in the hoop. The first thing we're gonna do is a placement line where I'm going to put my batting. So, uh, you know what? I think what I'm gonna do instead, because I've already stitched it out, I'm just go ahead, gonna go ahead and put this piece of batting in here. And let me just fit that in the hoop. There we go. And I'm just gonna do step one, which is stitch down the batting. some trimming. Oh, you guys are really close to that, aren't you? <laughs> Make sure y'all can see. You know, and it's a big hoop, so, you know, you're going to see part and part you're not going to see. That's just how it goes. Okay, I am going to double secure this down because I'm thinking, how did I do it before? I'm just going to, so you could do that first one as a placement stitch and then put your batting down and then stitch that down and then we'll trim it out. So I kind of did two steps when I only needed one, but so be it. That's the story of my life. But it's best to have more than not enough. I'm going to clear my desk off a little bit here. This uh, machine I'm using is a Brother Essence VE2300. It's a rather large machine and um, takes up pretty much the size of my desk. All right, I'm going to take this out. I want it. Oh, I'm sorry. So if I be bumping the camera, I'm going to say one big I'm sorry. It's sometimes very difficult to work around a camera. Any of you that have done it before know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, try making a video and see how that goes. Then you'll understand. 
I'm just going to trim around this batting. Now I'm going to have a nice piece left over. So I'm going to save that in my pile of batting. Pieces of batting you have left over. If you like to make stuffies and things like that, which are like stuffed, you know, little critters or animals or whatever it is you like to make, you can save those pieces of batting and you can go ahead and use them as stuffing in your projects. Let me just trim this out. This is a large hoop. It wants to keep jumping off my table as I'm trimming around. I'm trying to do my best with trimming. I mean, it's not rocket science, but it is good, good, good. All right, trim that out. Okay, put this in. Okay, next we're gonna do a placement stitch and it's gonna show you where you're going to put your first piece of fabric. So this is all done in the hoop. I absolutely love in the hoop projects, which basically if you're brand new, you don't put your fingers in the hoop. If you're brand new, you'll know what I'm talking about in the hoop projects in that everything is done in the hoop. You cut it out and flip it and, and you're good to go. So I have a piece of white fabric. I'm gonna slide this out a little bit because where those stitching lines are, you wanna make sure you put your fabric there. Although I have a pretty large piece here. I'm trying to see. Let me take this out, <coughs> excuse me, so I can get a better look on the desk. And I only have one camera, so I don't have any kind of fancy schmancy set up here. I'm a one girl show. And I put my fabric down. You could iron it. I'm lazy. Okay, so now it's going to stitch this piece of fabric down. You could use something like a purple thing, a foam folder. I'm going to kind of flatten this out a little bit. Well, we're going to do stitching over the top of it, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm kind of on the selvage edge there. No worries. Okay. So now we're going to do a quilting design all over the background. And I'm using white thread top and bottom. Let me try to adjust you a little bit more. I hope that's okay. But you'll see it as it comes closer to you with the stitching. So now we're going to do some stitching. So that little bit that I'm on the edge there, that's going to be a-okay. While it's stitching out, I'm going to decide. I think I'm going to use this for my backing. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so now we did all of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change my thread. And let me see, what color do I want to use? This is gonna, next step is gonna be for the words. 
and uh, I'm still looking through my fabric sorry I know most people like to you know go ahead and plan out ahead of time their colors yeah me not so much I think I'm gonna go with this coppery color brown which is gonna do the words the last one I did purple words purple's my favorite color you kind of tend to go toward your favorite color all the time, right? Okay. Oh, pulled that right out. All right. Something didn't feel right with that. Let me re-thread. So today is Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. I'm looking to see what's day May 16th, 2023. I hope I don't pull it out this time. No. Okay. I'm going to let this stitch a couple stitches and then I'm going to stop the machine and trim it. Okay. I'm going to trim this long thread because it could be caught, get caught underneath. Oh, my nose is itchy. All right, now I'm back to my fabric searching here. I'm gonna use this, this is I think I'm gonna use the bees on the front. treatment machine <laughs> sometimes you know I just don't know where to put it it just gets in the way but I need it for my treatments so I hope you are having a wonderful week um, this past weekend was Mother's Day I had a really really nice day um, my son and his girlfriend they had a cookout at the house so we were all over there for a fun outdoor day on Sunday. We were out there all day long. Um, the kids had a lot of fun. The dogs had a lot of fun. My son has two uh, German Shorter pointers and they love the outside. And they were non-stop from 12 noon until, I don't know what time it was, 6 o'clock or later. That they were running and running and running. And, uh, he has a couple sheds in his backyard and there's a uh, woodchuck that likes to go underneath. So the dogs know that there's a woodchuck in there. You know, they have hunting in their blood. So they will not leave underneath those sheds alone. And uh, they were kind of the opposite end of the yard. 
and all of a sudden the one went running to uh, the other side of the the uh, shed and boy when the dogs saw that they took off like a flash oh my goodness those dogs can run and that little woodchuck he must have nine lives because he just scooted he knew right when to scoot and he ran underneath the other one so but they just wouldn't leave that alone because they could smell it so you know they're they're hunting dogs you know you can't blame them because that's that's what they do all right i'm going to put some black in here now just going to do a little bit of an outline design but, uh, we had a real nice time we cooked on the grill with uh we had hamburgers and hot dogs and broccoli salad and snacks and cupcakes and cookies and um i had hamburger i really wanted a hot dog but i had a hamburger and once they ate the hamburger and the chips i was done it was done actually for the day i just I can't eat a lot anymore um, so that was my big meal of the day for breakfast that day um, because i knew i had to have something to eat I had peanut butter and jelly. Can I tell you? I mean, peanut butter and jelly is underrated. Peanut butter and jelly is so good. A friend of mine was posting some kind of uh, peanut butter that he found. I forget, nuts, something nuts or whatever. And it's mixed with all kind of stuff. I mean, you can get uh, peanut butter with chocolate, you can get with strawberry, I think it was like strawberry and pretzels, and all kind of combination. And I'll tell you, boy, that looks yummy. kind of other flavors i think there was one with like a s'more uh, i don't know all different kind so i'm gonna have to check that out and see what the cost is of that and maybe just try one jar but um she said she absolutely loves it and it does look mouth watering so um let's see what else is going on oh friday i go for my uh, mri anxious and nervous and all of the above. Uh, this will be my three month MRI from the last one. The last one was good. Uh, I've been using the Optum unit, I guess it's about three months. It'll be three months. And um, which is a, it's by Novacare and it is a uh, cancer treatment electronic device that um, you wear a raise on your head, they call them. And I get them changed twice a week, my son's girlfriend. She, um, she's wonderful, she comes over and she changes them for me. And um, it's treatment for the cancer. And what it does, you can check it. I always tell everybody, check it out. It's O-P-T-U-N-E, Optum. And um, it's not a cheap thing, um, it's very expensive. But um, I'm very fortunate that I'm able to utilize it. And what it does is it is supposed to stop cancer cells from um, re, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? reproducing. So if you know anything about uh, cells, just like good cells and bad cells, well, what it does is it, it heals the bad cells, which are the cancer cells. And um, it doesn't kill others. Like when, you, when I had the radiation, the radiation just kills all the cells. And um, this unit just works on when cancer, cancer cells want to reproduce. It um, works for killing them and stopping them from reproducing, thus creating another tumor. And then these I have if you're brand new here called Leoblastoma. Um, it's unfortunately quite popular. I don't know if I want to say popular, but common. And there is no cure for it. Uh, they're always working on some sort of cure. And I just keep praying every day that a, a cure is, you know, on the horizon. 
because um, it kind of shortens your lifespan by quite a bit. If you don't use any type of treatment, um, you pretty much only have 12 to 18 months from diagnosis. So uh, this Optune unit, with it killing the cancer cells from reproducing, it will give you, it will extend your life a little bit more. Well, that didn't take, did it? So... And it's actually, it's a, it's brain tumor is uh, what glioblastoma is, but it's a quick growing brain tumor. Um, it doesn't take very long at all for it to um, grow large. I want to cut this thread that I'm holding on to. So there's always more and more research. I just read about new research that came out. So, um, you know, they test it and then they have to uh, have volunteer people that will test it and see how it works for them. And, uh, you know, I, I think back in the, this is what I um, explained to a lot of people, like back when, I'm just readjusting for you guys, back when AIDS came out, you know, it was a deadly disease. Um, people died from it, but a cure was found and now people can be treated. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed and my prayers continuing that they do find a cure for it. Um, so those of us that are affected by it can get a cure, make it go away, and we can go on with our lives. Otherwise, it's, I try to be optimistic and positive. And um, I just keep thinking, you know, there's gonna be a cure. There's gonna be a cure, it's, it's coming out. And um, in the meantime, I'll keep doing the treatment plan. I do uh, six rounds of chemotherapy. And I just completed my third round. And that's why you haven't heard from me because um, it's oral medication. So it's not like where you have to be hooked up, you know, for an infusion or anything. But um, it just, it wipes me out. It, it just makes, well, I'm, I'm tired all the time anyhow, but it makes me extremely tired and just no ambition whatsoever. So when I feel good, I want to keep going. I want to do things. So I've been cleaning out closets and drawers and you know, my craft supplies. I mean, the other bedroom is gonna be a big project because everything I was cleaning out kind of ended up in there. And I need to clean that out because my daughter um, got bunk beds. Actually, her boys got new bunk beds, they're new beds, and she asked me if I wanted the bunk beds. So they're going to go in that room, so when the boys, you know, want to stay over, you know, they each will have twin beds, because right now there's a twin bed in there, but the other bed is a toddler bed. And the little guy was, was getting too big for it. Which, Mother's Day, they came over to hang some plants and things for me, and she said, well, we took the toddler bed. So the toddler bed is gone. <laughs> so it looks so odd in there because there's one big space. But um, I need to get in there and to uh, clean out that room. And a lot of my fabric and sewing things kind of drizzled into that room. <laughs> I'll say drizzled into that room. We all know what I mean about that. It's kind of the overflow. But I just need to in the right frame of mind to be able to do that because it's long and involved and I'm trying to do a little bit at a time. So that's, that's my story as far as that. Um, get, trying to get organized and you know, having craft supplies if you're a crafter, which most likely you are if you're watching this or you sew, you know how the fabric just you know, it gets out of hand. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe I should be doing some fabric um, box hauls. You know, they're um, putting up a mystery box. I think I should call it that mystery box. So that uh, I could try to get rid of some of that. But you know, as soon as you get rid of it, that's when you need it. Isn't that the truth? 
you get rid of something and then you're like, what did I do with that? And you'd be like, oh, that's right. I gave that away. But, I mean, it could be there forever and you didn't, you didn't use it. And the minute you get rid of it, you're enjoying your day. Um, it was sunny here, but now it's kind of overcast. I'm not sure if it's all rain or not. Just giving some back here. But, um, I don't know. It's, it's very overcast. I didn't check the uh, weather for today. Other uh, machine embroiderers, embroiderers, embroiderers. I think that's the word. And you could post projects you're working on. I just ask, you know, no selling and no, you know, if you if you have a design that you purchase that you use, um, you're free to share that. But I just don't don't want no politics, no religion talk, no, you know, keep it upbeat and, and fun. We don't want to bog it down with and things that aren't appropriate. So if it is appropriate and I see it on there, I will delete it. Uh, just so you know, up front, if you're wondering, you know, I wonder what happens in the comment. Perhaps it was not appropriate, so I have to remove it. And there's a, a, a lot of really nice people over there and sharing what they love. A lot of them um, not only do machine embroidery, they sew as well. I think a lot of us are kind of like that. Like we probably started off as being uh, sewists, seamstresses. I wouldn't call myself a seamstress because I don't do clothing. But, um, you know, we kind of ventured into the embroidery because if you could sew, then you can make your own projects and then you can embroider on the projects that you make. It's a win-win. And if you don't, you, there's always things that are pre-made and you can just stitch on them. I just love, love, love machine embroidery. I think there's just so many opportunities that you can um, create with. You can make things, the colors that you like and coordinate with your house or, you know, you have uh, people you're making gifts for, you know, they like, you can personalize things, there's just so much you can do with machine embroidery. You're not limited at all. By no means are you limited. Alright, we're just finishing up this green, and then next we're going to do um, the branches that go with these leaves. So when I finish this project, I'm going to upload this video and I'll you know, have myself some lunch. It's almost 2 o'clock. change my thread again there's not too many thread changes it all depends on what you know what threads and colors you want to use maybe you just want to make it all one color and you can do that I'm using a brown now that's going to do the branches and then we are almost done i'm going to put our backing on i was going to do the branch part of the uh, leaves so maybe a minute the rest of them every change of color or every section is only going to be another minute
sandwich on the other side. And we'll change the thread back to white and finish up this project. I see a few little jump stitches in there that I'll have to take my uh, scissors to. thread from the bottom don't back up and pull from the top because that you can kind of come into some trouble with um, putting some excess strain on your um, tension so always cut the top and then pull through the bottom like it normally goes so this is just going to do a stitch one little thing see what it just did one little stitch and now i don't know why it does that now we're going to do a stitch along the bottom like a placement stitch one on each end that's going to do our end pieces of fabric i'm going to use these bees on that one there then we're going to do one down at the bottom fabric down okay and we're back up at the top and what you want to do here is you're going to take your fabric and you're going to put right sides down like this okay make sure you have on each edge and you're going to go ahead and stitch that down. I don't know. I wonder if we're going to get some rain. Because it's kind of getting like a little breezy out there. Let's just stitch it back and forth. Okay. Now we're going to go down to the bottom. And what you want to do is get this fabric out of the way. This is going to go over to that side like so. Now I'm going to take my other piece of fabric and I'm going to put it down along here just like the previous one. I'll tell you, when I read the directions, because with Creative Fabrica they have a sewing part of the design that gives you the directions. I was really so confused. I was... I don't know, I wasn't getting it. And I'm like, well, this must be what you do. You know, so. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold them back. If you wanna use a little bit of tape, or if you wanna, you know, use a small little iron, and fold it back like so. And then we're gonna stitch it down. pieces with a fold so I'm going to put one piece here so they're folded in half with the right sides out and I want to make sure this is going to be long enough so you have 
two pieces folded together. The fold is right here in the middle. And I'm looking for where that stitching is. So that's gonna go there. Now you want this to overlap a little bit. And then you're gonna stitch this down. You wanna be careful where this overlaps because the foot of the machine can get stuck underneath it. So you're gonna do a triple stitch all around. So when it's coming up around the other edge, you wanna make sure that foot does not get caught in there. This is the final step. Let me see this fabric here kind of folded over. I don't really think that's going to matter. Because that part's gonna get cut off. So you made a little envelope backing. Like a lot of times pillows are made this way. up here is where you need to be concerned and I'll show you when we get there that I'm going to slow down the machine and possibly even have to stop the machine so I'm going to stop it right now just to make sure this is down and I will show you what I mean if you hold in the button I'm not doing it yet but if you hold in the green button the machine will go one stitch at a time. Okay, when I get a little close, I'm gonna stop. Okay, and I'm gonna hold in this the green button. And it will do one stitch. And I'm gonna lift the foot up to make sure that fabric does not get caught underneath there. I'm gonna continue to hold the green button in. So I pass by this spot. Okay, then you're good to go. Because I've had where I was almost done with the project, my foot got caught underneath there, ripped the whole thing, and I guess you have to finish it on your sewing machine in order to uh, complete it. And let's listen. Finish sewing, hit the okay. It's all set if you wanted to go ahead and do another one. But we're gonna stop here because he soon needs to go for lunch soon. Okay, all right, I'm just checking the back. Let me slide on over to my laptop. I'm just watching a YouTube channel. And close your eyes if you get dizzy, I'm moving you on over to my desk. music's playing <laughs> okay so here it is let me show you the back here's the back okay which that'll be the inside so I'm gonna take it out of the hoop and put my hoop aside and then what you want to do is you want to trim all the way around with your scissors now these pieces of bees that are left they're gonna go into my scrap pile so you want to trim around. And kind of go at an angle on the corner. You want to make sure you have a nice sharp pair of scissors. Keep a pair of scissors for fabric only, fabric and ribbons. Put a little uh, tag on it so that Everybody in your household knows to use these on anything but fabric and threads. They're gonna be in trouble. Now you can go and clip around the corners if you want. I don't bother with that. Now what we're gonna do is turn it right side out. So take the corner and push it out. And I like to use a bone folder. Okay, I use a bone folder to press out my corners I know I see a lot of people using scissors and 
sharp things. You just have the chance of poking right through your fabric and making a hole. And then everything you just created is going to go down the tubes. Or you're going to have to take it apart and uh, stitch it on your sewing machine. And we don't want to do that. That defeats the whole purpose of in the hoop. Right? All right. Now you would want to go and take an iron to this if you choose. If you're like me, you choose not to. <laughs> just get used to uh, pressing it with my hands. I'm just bringing it close to get all the corners out. And then I will show you. Okay. So here's a few little stitches, jump stitches, and things that... You want to trim. You can use little embroidery scissors. They're probably your best bet. Trim them. You could trim them when it's it's still even in the hoop. And do your trimming. All right. Well, we'll stop there so you don't have to watch me <laughs> keep trying to trim these little pieces. Although it's kind of like, oh, I want to do. I want to get that one, and I want to get that one. There we go. Just a little bit up here. It's kind of like addicting where you know, you're like, yeah, I got to get that last little bit. Okay, so before I ruin anything. All right, so there is our mug rug. You can do it. The little bees. And then on the back, I have some florals. And this can stay like this. Or you can go ahead if you want to stitch this, hand stitch. I probably would glue it or use some... Uh, tape that you can iron on and close that up whatever works for you let me pull in the other one so you can see them both kind of sort of one next to another maybe that'll work better but um i think they're really cute i see a few more jump stitches that i'm gonna have to go through and uh, trim them but i think it's an adorable project quick and simple you could take this and give it to someone with a mug maybe a little couple cookies or something and what a great gift it would be and tell them you made it yourself so i want to thank you all so much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed this fun little project and i hope you subscribe click the notification bell go ahead and give me a thumbs up share comments i'd love to hear what you think of this what colors would you use and who would you give this to so thank you all so much for joining me Please be safe out there and enjoy your day and happy stitching. Bye for now.